Hello, I'm Derek Pryor from Resulting. Today I'm in the Resulting STEM studio. Originally a chemical engineer, I moved into industrial automation and then SAP business applications. I spent 20 years with Gartner, focusing on SAP customers, research and advice on SAP business applications. Well, today I'm in the studio and I have the real pleasure of talking to Nick Coburn, Delivery Director at Resulting, about a fascinating subject, how hard it is to be successful with SAP. Nick, in my research, there are so many clients that seem to say, Derek, we've got this problem. You know what? It was the same problem in many cases. Nick, in your experience of implementing and supporting SAP customers, what have you seen in terms of the challenges of just being successful with SAP? Well, I think, Derek, after all this time, after 20-something years, I think I, I'm myself I'm in my 21st year of being around SAP you think that by now we would have learned all the lessons of the past, but that's, that's not necessarily the case. Um, I think far too often there's, a, there's such a huge focus on being on an SAP project or an SAP programme, and it, it completely takes over. If you're on the programme, it takes over your life for one, two years, or you know, sometimes three years or more if you're doing a big global template deployment. And there's a huge cost associated with that programme, and it's the number one focus for the business at that time. And far too frequently the focus is on let's get this live, let's get it into the business and then essentially it's almost let's move on. And sadly there's far too many SAP implementations that have just been technology replacement programs. You know, many, many times when you're building the business case so many organisations say this is far more than just a technology program, this is going to be truly transformational, we're going to completely change our business, we're going to standardise the way that we do things um, we're going to rationalise and we're really going to transform across all of our business processes. That's only going to happen if you actually think about what you do beyond day one or beyond hypercare. And unfortunately, far too frequently, mm. the programme goes live, the programme team from your vendor disappears, your support team go back into their roles, frequently in, in IT. Um, you may set up some form of centre of excellence, but unless there's really an ongoing commitment to really drive the value from the implementation, then it is just going to be an expensive technology replacement programme. Nick, I couldn't agree with you more because as a Gartner analyst, I lost count of the number of discussions I had with Gartner clients about problems they had after they'd implemented and trying to get them to understand that a best practice, which has been around for a long time, decide right up front what level of self-sufficiency you as a customer need to end up with surely Nick would you would you agree with that it, it's got to have a big bearing on how you work with the business and with the systems integrators hasn't it it does it make it absolutely it's that it's at the again it's at the forefront of, of the good intentions around a program and many organizations do build out centers of excellence or centers of expertise or customer competence centers whatever you choose to call them but far too frequently they're still really em embedded only on the IT side um, and we spent a huge amount of time we've worked with many many customers around building an organization which really drives self-sufficiency and really drives sustainability and you have to do that with both the IT organization and the business organization itself those organizations that do that well um, actually have a huge focus on process transformation from go live and beyond they're the ones who have a truly embedded business case they have metrics from the outset. They have people who are accountable for those metrics and accountable for those business processes. So often a global process owner structure. Organizations that really drive benefit and value from SAP implementations have GPOs who are accountable for the business case and accountable for the metrics ongoing. And often there's an organization in place to support them to continue to drive that transformation. If you just go live and support it from a technology perspective, You'll get some benefit, but you're not going to realise the true benefit. So what I hear you saying is quite loud and clear, actually. SAP is not a technology project. It's about business, about business process with, with measurable uh, business process value. I think, I think I also heard you say being on time and on budget with an SAP project, it's not enough. You've got to be on value, business value. Absolutely. It's all, it's all about value. It's a benefit and value realisation. And it, the, the key there is... The business case may look great, but unless you've got ongoing sponsorship, unless you review the business case 
On an ongoing basis before you go live, organisations that run their programmes well review the business case at every stage gate just to check that actually, does this still make sense? Are we doing the right things? Is this programme still worth doing? Is it worth investing another 10, 20 million in that programme? Actually, sometimes just to get that live. Yeah. The organisations that do that well have that follow through all the way through into the post go live organisation and beyond. And when you look back, five years beyond your go live, you can demonstrate that you absolutely have realised that value against those metrics that you put in place and you took accountability for. That's really important. That all sounds great to me, Nick, but I wonder, I wonder how many customers do we think, here in the UK, here, here in, the, in the UK, I wonder what percentage of customers actually do all of that. It, it's challenging stuff, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the answer is not enough. Some do it, some do it and have done it really, really well. There are some good examples out there, but far too frequently, people just don't give that enough attention. And I think the key there is, is really understanding um, how it can be done. What are the right ways to um, set up your organisation structure? Um, what are the roles that make a, a really big difference? How do you, how do you govern um, a solution once it's live and once it's back in the business? That's really important. How do you really drive the benefits and value? How do you measure those KPIs going forward? So often it's useful to, to benchmark, it's to do the benchmarking as you're going through the programme and to continue that benchmarking post go live as well they're the organizations who who do make a difference and get this right well this sounds very different to i think a, tra a traditional systems integrator and it sounds like there's a lot of very focused ex uh, advice we resulting can bring to the to any sap customer to get the business it governance right yeah we obviously got a huge amount of experience as, as i said uh, earlier mm. 21 years in SAP, um, and that's just me, you know, across the team, a huge amount of experience both in running programs, but also in understanding how organizations need to work. We've worked with, with many, many companies globally around how they need to be set up. What's that operate model need to look like? What are the key roles? What's the governance that you need to have in place? So um, it's, a, it's a, a question we're frequently asked, how can you help us to run better? And not just when you're getting ready to go live, but even two or three years after go live, we're frequently asked to go in and do assessments on um, a company's organisation structure and how that can be transformed. And of course, with the advent of, of HANA, with S4 HANA, and all of the different areas around HANA itself, it's a question that's coming back to the fore. You know, how do you put together a business case for S4 HANA? Is it really worth doing? Should I do it now? Should I wait? And actually with HANA itself, it can be truly transformational. The way that, the, that SAP have changed the processes, it's making a huge difference and it's really putting value back in the business. It's really enabling the business to be agile, to be responsive to, to the market, to be responsive to customer needs. So thinking carefully about the business case for HANA right now is really important because it's not necessarily something you should do right now in terms of let's go ahead and implement HANA, but getting ahead of the game and understanding when is the right time, but also how do we measure the value of that investment in HANA is absolutely key. Great, I couldn't agree with you more. S4 HANA is about, it's so new that it's a big change for the business. So staying focused on the business case, I think the business kind of expect that. So sounds like uh, you and your team must be really busy. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Thanks, Derek.